Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Unitarian Church of Edmonton. My name is John Pater, and I have the privilege of leading you through this service this morning of reflections on the year past, on the year 2022. I've done versions of this service probably for a decade or more. Um, and this time around, I'm going to use music released in 2022 to help reflect on the year. I think that music and the artist will feature are a good fit for our UU faith and for our reflections on the year 2022. The Unitarian Universalist faith is a creedless community dedicated to a free and responsible search for truth and meaning. We embrace a pluralist philosophy, opening our hearts and minds to the, to the diverse ideas, feelings, and expressions of our world community. Whatever your heritage, whatever your faith, whomever you love, you are welcome here today. We respectfully acknowledge that we are located on Treaty 6 territory, a traditional gathering place for diverse Indigenous peoples, including the Cree, Blackfoot, Métis, Nakota Sioux, Iroquois, Dene, Ojibwe, Salto, Anishinaabe, Inuit, and many others whose histories, languages, and culture continue to influence our vibrant community. We recognize that everyone here has a role to play to help build this community. We can do so by cherishing old friendships and opening our circle to include newcomers. We give thanks to those who work on behalf of this community every day. We acknowledge our volunteers who help make this service run so smoothly. We ask that you take a moment now to ensure that your cell phones and noise emitting devices are silenced. And it is our practice to stay after the service to enjoy tea or coffee, so please stay and join us. Before we formally begin our service, I want to make room for any announcements regarding the work of our community. And I know at least Lynn has one announcement. If anyone else has an announcement, please come forward now. Thanks, John. And good morning. Um, our final group discussions, our final group discussions uh, on, well, organized by the Ministerial Transition Team, will take place today after the service. We had a great turnout last week uh, with five in-person groups and two Zoom groups. So thank you all for those who participated in those groups. The discussion groups gave people um, a chance to give their input on how they feel the church is doing within its many and varied ministries and how Reverend Rosemary is playing a part in all of that. Uh, that gave people uh, an opportunity to share ideas and actually start to think about all those things before the actual vote will take place on uh, changing Reverend Rosemary's status from contract to settled minister. But if you didn't participate last week and would like to, uh, please meet in uh, the hall, the sanctuary rather, Keeler, Keeler Hall, not the sanctuary, Keeler Hall, right after the service so that we can organize you into groups. And once you have been assigned to a group, please feel free to grab a coffee or tea Take your comfort break as necessary and then head on to your meeting spots. And we think the discussions will take about 45 minutes. Okay, thank you. So some of my time here on the stage will be here at this chair. I'm kind of trying to channel, I don't know, Charles Dickens, um, Hans Christian Andersen. I've got my you know, bottle of port. <laughs> so just uh, a note before we start the service, this service of reflection on the year 2022 is going to include several recorded music selections. We will be able to listen to these in real time, both for those tuning in online and for those of you here in the sanctuary. However, due to copyright constraints, these recordings will not be available if you want to listen or watch a recorded version of this service. 
So just a note that there, are, there will be blank spots in the recording of this service where the recorded music pieces will be heard. But if you're present here this morning, online um, or in person, you will hear everything that is shared. We're glad to have you with us this morning. We hope you find something in the service today that nourishes your spirit and helps you find and keep your balance. We're going to have a prelude, a piece of music, a really important one, to begin our reflections on the year past. We're going to listen to a Canadian anthem, the song Four Strong Winds by Ian Tyson. This Canadian icon of music and culture died just before the end of the year. Ian Tyson died on December 29th at his ranch in Longview, Alberta. He was 89. He broke into the folk and popular music scene in 1959, and he was active as a musician until he died. One of his best known songs, I'm sure you all know, is Four Strong Winds, which he and, and his then wife Sylvia first recorded back in 1962. I think of this song as a year-end anthem because of its references to time and to change. It references those big mythical things that don't change, the winds from the four directions, the seven seas of our globe. But those big cosmological entities are contrasted to our more human mortal lives, which do change. Particularly in the context of the year end, I think this song can assist in our reflections on a year that has passed. Our good times of 2022 are gone, so it's time for moving on. This is our farewell, I think, to 2022. So we'll listen now to this version of the song recorded by Ian and Sylvia 60 years ago. I'm gonna ask Kathy Stanley to come forward and light our chalice. Kathy came all the way in from Westlock this morning. It's really nice to see her again. Our chalice lighting is going to be some words from traditional Old English, 19th century, that Lorena McKennett turned into music. And the words go like this. And so the world goes round and round, and every time and season, with pleasure and with profit, crowns the passage of the year. So a year is made up of many, many, many stories. There are the stories derived from current events, politics, culture, sports, natural disasters. There are stories that unfold in novels or that we watch on screen and stage. There are our personal life stories, the highs and lows of our daily lives. Charles Dickens did a wonderful job summarizing the multiple meanings of a year in his opening words in A Tale of Two Cities. So I'm going to ask you to recite these with me. They're up on the screen. Um, and you can join in on Zoom as well. Uh, so join me in this opening reading. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the era of belief. It was the era of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter. Continuing that theme, uh, we'll sing now a hymn from our hymn book, our gray hymn book, uh, number 51. We'll sing verses 1 and 4 of this hymn called Lady of the Season's Laughter. So join in in singing either through hymn book or on screen. <laughs>
So a story now. Uh, typically there might be a children's story. I think children can listen to this story as well. Uh, this is an excerpt from a new novel this year by Thomas Trofimuk. He's an Edmonton writer. And his new novel is called The Elephant on Karlov Bridge. It's a story about an elephant named Sal who has escaped from the Prague Zoo and is wandering through the streets of Prague in the overnight hours. One of her stops is an old church where a choir is holding a very early morning rehearsal, 4 a.m. I'm looking at Karen and Gordon. <laughs> Don't try that with Coriolis. But there is a reason for this early morning rehearsal, which you'll find out about. Conductor Milan Janos, unshaven and wearing a blue Oxford cloth dress shirt, untucked over jeans, has gathered the Rimska choir for an early morning rehearsal in the Malastrana district of Prague, in the church of St. Nicholas, under the high cupola of the St. Barbara Chapel. It's early, but in three days, this is where they will perform a concert that has been sold out for weeks. A rehearsal this early is unorthodox, but not uncommon. It was the only time they could get the space without disturbing the regular activities of the church. The program for the concert includes a uh, Peter Gabriel piece called Mercy Street, Mahler's Adagietto from his Fifth Symphony, John Tavener's The Lamb, and one of Palestrina's Lamentations. The one piece troubling the conductor is The Lamb. The harmonies in this piece are exquisite and not too difficult, but the phrasing seems forced at times and too timid in some places. The dome of the cupola poses a unique set of challenges for a choral performance. It takes the sound and curves it back toward the floor and the walls of the church. The floor is also part of the problem as it is stone and unadorned with carpet. The Rimska choir is made up of a core of 14 singers with a few alternates. 16 are present for this early rehearsal. The choir is gathered among three candelabras that have been placed under the dome sorting their music and chatting as Milan takes his position at the stand and claps his hands twice. An echo reverberates. The singers have their eyes on him now. Okay then, we'll warm up with the Palestrina, the Lamentations of Jeremiah, the second movement. He looks down at the score for a moment, waits for the shuffling of paper to finish. He counts them in and they begin the Palestrina. The sound bounces around the church as the reverberations of echoes try to cancel themselves out. The result is muddy and imprecise. He pats the air, signaling the choir to sing a little more softly, and the clarity returns. Now the challenge is to perform a lower volume, but with the same intensity. Meanwhile, Sal, the elephant, is drawn to the sweet smell of incense and the sound of the Palestrina lamentations. She enters the Church of St. Nicholas through the side door, which is about the same size and shape as the entrance to the elephant's building at the zoo. She half expects, half hopes, the herd to be waiting for her. She moves through the narrow corridor and into the vast and open space of the church, drinks deeply from the font of holy water near the entrance, and pads softly across the black and white checkerboard floor. At the edge of the circle of candlelight, she stops and is held by the music. The choir finishes the palestrina and is moving on to Taverner's The Lamb. Okay, the Taverner, says the conductor. We've talked it through already. I'm sure you'll remember the lyrics are based on the poem by William Blake. Taverner understood the poem, I think. So let's try it here in this beautiful space. The choir is waiting. He raises his hands, the choir inhale together, and they begin to sing. When Milan looks up from his music, an elephant appears behind the choir. He drops his baton and his knees buckle. He keeps conducting with one hand, and then he straightens up. Why is an elephant in this church? Is this a prank? No, no, his first impulse is to stop everything and move the choir out of the way to clear the room and let the elephant have its space. He struggles to control the tempo. He's rushing it. He knows he's pushing the beat. Slow down, he tells himself. Keep breathing. 
he should stop conducting and get his choir to safety. But what if the music is the thing keeping the elephant calm? It appears to be transfixed. Perhaps there is something hypnotizing in the music. Milan forces himself to look at the elephant as if it is part of a bigger picture that includes a small choir and a 300-year-old church. He decides he will not do anything about the elephant. His singers are focused on him and on getting the lamb right. The elephant seems to be listening to the music. If God is telling him something, he's missing it. Still, some small part of him realizes that if this elephant is possible in this church, then perhaps anything is possible. Sal hears the psalm of mourning, and she steps forward out of the darkness and into the light. She listens to the troubling rise and fall of the lamb, and she sways. She knows this is some kind of mourning psalm, but it is different than anything she knows. She is completely lost in the music. Sal listens and watches as the choir's mourning psalm fills the building with its grief. When the lamb is done, the choir applauds because they realize they were in the realm of beauty and that is always worthy of applause. Some of the singers have tears in their eyes. They are pleased by their performance and they should be. They were oblivious to the elephant and the elephant has disappeared perfectly into the darkness beyond the candlelight as if it were never there. So, an extract from Thomas Trofimuk's book, The Elephant at Karlov Bridge. A wonderful, wonderful story. Now the offering. Our community is entirely self-governing and self-supporting. One of the privileges of our free church tradition is to provide all of the financial support for our many ministries from among ourselves. Generosity, therefore, is one of the spiritual values we recognize as central to our personal and institutional well-being. In addition to supporting this church community, we also make a monthly con commitment beyond our walls. One half of the unidentified cash that is received is given to an outside organization. Some are local some national, some international. For the month of January, we are sharing our abundance with Change for Children. You can share cash here in person or donate online to UCE and to Change for Children. During the offering, we're going to listen to one of my musical discoveries of 2022, and that is a song performed by Irish singer-songwriters Mick Flannery and Susan O'Neill. This song is about the change we can all participate in to make the world a better place. They sing, you caused a chain reaction, you made it happen, and I thank you for what you've done. So this song is for us all, in our contributions to positive change, small and large, whether that be by bringing hope to an individual person or working on a larger scale to make political, social, or environmental change or the in-the-cash contributions we provide now to the work of this church community and to Change for Children. So we'll now collect the offering while hearing the song Chain Reaction with Mick Flannery and Susan O'Neill. So thank you for your generosity. Now we'll sing our offering to him. my uh, television camera person wanted me to make sure my fate was in, face was in the light and not just my book. <laughs> Is that right, Declan? That's why he moved it. So how's that? Awesome. 
so my reflections this year, and in previous years and past years, um, I often did more informal services around this. We would gather around on a Sunday between Christmas and New Year's, and we would kind of share our stories of what our stories of the year were like. This year, I'm going to do a little bit of a different take on it. Um, I'm going to take a listen to, and we're going to listen together to some wonderful music from an album that came out this year, um, and use that music to help us understand and reflect on the year past. So they're going to be viewed through the lens of a cultural text rather than a biblical text. Got that reference? Uh, the text, in this case, being a new album that came out in 2022 by Russian-American singer-songwriter Regina Spector. She lives in New York City. The album is called Home Before and After. It was created during the pandemic and released in June 2022. Regina Spector is an interesting artist. She was born in Moscow in 1980. Her family of Russian Jewish background left the Soviet Union in 1989, settling in the Bronx, New York. She was classically trained on the piano, but in her late teens became interested in writing songs about the, along the lines of Joni Mitchell or Annie DeFranco and other singer-songwriters. She's put out eight albums in the past 20 years. Her songs are not pop songs, they're not simplified love songs. She addresses complex and often quirky topics in her music. But she isn't an obscure singer-songwriter who could perhaps be written off as not being particularly relevant. She has an immense following. On YouTube Music Alone, which is the streaming service I use, she has over 400,000 subscribers. And some of her music videos have over 25 million views. Her latest album, released in 2022, I think, has songs of particular relevance to the year we just experienced. And so I'm going to analyze the year, reflect on the year, through her latest music. My approach will be to ask how her music can help bring meaning and understanding to our reflections on the events of 2022. So I've got this in two parts. So part one is titled, Why Aren't Things Getting Better? The year 2022 perhaps could be summarized with that question. Why doesn't it get better with time? We are well into the 21st century, so how can geopolitics, human understanding, relationships between peoples seem to be going backwards? We started the year with a seemingly endless pandemic well into its third or fourth wave, uh, nearing its second year of shutting down economies, isolating us from our neighbors, overwhelming hospitals and ICUs. It was to take till well into summer before most pandemic measures and restrictions would be lifted across the country and across the globe. Starting on January 29th this, year, this past year, the city of Ottawa was overwhelmed with a freedom convoy by protesters opposed to government pandemic measures, including mandatory vaccines for some industries. On February 14, the federal government declared a public order emergency under the Emergencies Act. It was to take a further week till February 20 for things to return to normal in Ottawa. On February 24th, Russia's President Vladimir Putin instigated a criminal war on Ukraine which continues through the whole year with useless destruction of cities, infrastructure and lives. And the best the rest of the world can do is institute economic sanctions and watch a nation being destroyed and lives being lost. Over the course of the year, fundamentalist Islamic regimes in Iran and Afghanistan continued their backwards war on women and girls, trampling modern human rights and freedoms. In the US, Roe v. Wade was overturned by the Supreme Court in June 2022. Essentially, that was an overturning of a historic 1973 decision which provided a fundamental right to privacy which protects a pregnant woman's right to an abortion. In Alberta, May 20 saw Jason Kenney gain only 51.4% of the support of United Conservative Party members in a leadership review, which instigated a race for a new leader. In October, Daniel Smith won 53.8% of the support of UCP party members, and she became premier. So we went from Jason Kenney to Daniel Smith. Who would have thought that Jason Kenney was actually a moderate? So what is happening in our world? Why aren't things getting better with time? How can it be that we are going backwards? That question is at the heart of the first song on Regina Spector's new album. 
The song itself was actually released in March, several months before the actual album release. And it really resonates as a pandemic song, first of all, and then more deeply as a song for this year of things just not getting better. The story that is told in the song is of a person walking home at night alone. Imagine the songwriter walking the streets of Manhattan at night. In normal times, you are not alone. This isn't the city that doesn't sleep. There are always people coming and going at all hours. And yet the plaintive opening line of the song goes, I went walking home alone past all the bars and corner delis. Having lived through a pandemic shutdown, we just know that many of those bars and delis have been shut down for periods of time. In this story, there are maybe some that are open again. As she's walking, she encounters God, who suggests, hey, let's grab a beer. It's awful late, but we're both right here. And over a beer, the philosophical question is asked, why doesn't it get better with time? And that question is followed by the observation, I'm becoming all alone again. I think that's our collective COVID cry, a seemingly endless pandemic, one wave after another. It wasn't getting better, and we are alone again. The same can be said of the war on Ukraine and other wars past and present. When will it end? When can normal life resume? or the ongoing battles for human rights and freedoms around the globe, or the desire for sane civil politics. Why doesn't it get better with time? And we are often left feeling we are becoming all alone again. The songwriter does suggest a solution in this song, a way out of this malaise. She has a wish, both for those who strive for a better life, who strive for justice, peace, human rights, and for those who are apathetic, who don't care. She puts it this way in the song. Let the ones who want it bad get all the things that make it better. Let the ones who don't care feel a thrill. We can recover. We can make things better, says the songwriter. Through the science of vaccines, we're finding our way out of a pandemic. Ukraine is hanging in there, despite all the destruction and is fighting back against the Russian aggressor with assistance from the West. The US midterm elections showed promise that polarized, uncivil political discourse and conspiracy theories will not win the day. But the songwriter still laments that we still have a long way to go. As she sings, I just want to ride, but this whole world, it makes me carsick. And so even though the songwriter is an avowed humanist, as we discover in another song on this album. She and God do go for that beer, where she can ask the question again, why doesn't it get better with time? I'm becoming all alone again. And all that she can think and hope for is to ask God to stay. So let's listen to this song. Here is Becoming All Alone by Regina Spector. That song's ending, asking God to stay because we are all alone and things are not getting better, is interesting since it comes from the voice and perspective of an avowed humanist. Regina Spector says as much in another song on this album where a line is repeated, oh, an incurable humanist you are. It's rather odd to hear those words in a song. But as the song goes along, she defines what she means for her, what that means for her. And in so doing, I think, points to how things can get better. The song points to what it's going to take to reverse what feels like a regression in human societies, societies across the globe. And so in this part two, I'm calling it reversing the regressive trend. If we look back at 2022, while there are many moves backwards, we did experience some moves forward this year. Some things did get better in 2022. One example is the United Nations 2022 Climate Change Conference, known as COP27, held in Egypt in November. It was set against a difficult geopolitical backdrop, as we all know, but it resulted in a package that strengthened action by countries to cut greenhouse gas emissions and adapt to the inevitable impacts of climate change, 
as well as boosting the support of finance, technology, and capacity building needed by developing countries. There was also the United Nations Biodiversity Conference, COP15, in Montreal in December. Governments from the around the world came together to agree on a new set of goals to guide global action through 2030 to halt and reverse nature loss. The U.S. midterm elections in November. The usual pattern for U.S. midterm elections is for the party of the sitting president to experience huge losses in the House of Representatives and the Senate. Everyone predicted that the Democrats, with a relatively uninspiring president and Joe Biden, would lose big time. However, going against history, the Democrats only lost nine seats in the House and actually gained one in the Senate. The fact the Democrats held so well this year, despite historical odds against them, and that there were defeats of almost all Donald Trump's ultra-conservative conspiracy theorist choices, it was a dramatic result. Something shifted in the minds and hearts of U.S. voters. A hopeful sign if you are at all progressively minded. So to what do we credit these positive changes in a year which seem to be regressing in so many ways? I think Regina Spector has an answer to that in her song about being an incurable humanist. I might be a bit biased since I would describe myself that way, but Regina Spector's definition of humanism I think does provide her a perspective on how or why these positive changes may have come about. So unpacking the song just a bit. After the initial refrain, which repeats the line, oh, an incurable humanist you are, she pokes a little at the stereotypical view of humanists as having no real solid values or beliefs. The song goes, let's go to the movies, and I'll hum you a song about nothing at all. Let's go to the movies, which are about nothing at all. It reminds me of the Steve Martin song about how atheists have no songs unlike Christians and other actual religions, the stereotypical belief being that humanism and atheism have no real solid grounding in anything. And the movie theaters and Hollywood is emblematic of that emptiness. But Regina Spector then challenges this viewpoint and begins citing a list of beliefs that are held by humanists. They may not have a belief system rooted in theology, but they do have other ologies the list starts with what may be heard in a classroom and then moves on to bigger and broader beliefs and values. So she starts with porcupine-ology, antler-ology, car-ology, bus-ology, train-ology, plane-ology, and then mama-ology, papa-ology, you-ology, me-ology, love-ology, Kissology, stayology, pleaseology, I'm sorryology, forgive meology. Regina Spector's listing of beliefs, logic from which we get the term, the suffix ology, adds up to a humanism that is actually quite profound. And in the context of this album and the times it was written in, and admittedly from my bias again as a religious liberal and humanist, I think this kind of value system is behind the kind of positive change we've seen this year. Collective global action on climate change, voters rejecting politics of fear. These are the kind of actions that come from a perspective of loveology, forgive meology, pleaseology, mamaology, papaology, etc. Belief in evidence, science, rational thought, and ultimately love. From where I sit, the answer to the world's regression toward fundamentalism, empire building, conspiracies, and fear are truths founded in humanism. Regina Spector has written a song celebrating humanism. So we'll listen now to this song. It's actually called Loveology by Regina Spector. So those are just two songs from the album. I'm not going to make you or have us here for several hours to digest the whole thing. 
Those, those songs are cultural text, I think, that help provide meaning for the past year. Other songs in the album resonate with similar messages. There's one that speaks of our quest for answers. And the song does not allow for a simplified truth because in the answer is another answer and another and another. Yet another song faces us with the reality that our world and our life is made up of opposites. There's living and dying. There's loving and leaving. There's lying and believing. Regina Spector is good at reflecting back to us this unresolved nature of our humanity and our planet. In summary, I think Regina Spector is a rare artist, and I dare say a prophet in and for our time. She's an artist who I think resonates for us as religious liberals. She's another of those Unitarians out there who don't know they're Unitarian. She can be one of those sources of our UU faith. And so my choice for album of the year is Regina Spector's Home Before and After. It is a relevant, timely, and inspiring cultural text that helps provide meaning for the year 2022 and beyond. Now time to sing a hymn, or you get to do something for change. So we'll sing him, sing him number 57 again, right in the middle. Um, all beautiful and martial days to sing up for you about full context of the inspector's music. And we'll sing verses 1 and 2 uh, in 57 and <coughs> We're not going to spend a little time allowing each of us individually to reflect on the year 2022. All that has happened this year in our world and in our own lives has had an impact on how we understand the meaning of life, the universe, and everything. I'll begin this meditation time with some wise words by Thomas Moore from The Reenchantment of Everyday Life. This will be followed by a brief time of silence. And then as music begins, it's an instrumental piece performed by Bruce Coburn. I invite you to come forward and light a candle to mark all the stories of your life from the year past. The two candle stations are available for this purpose. You're also welcome to remain where you sit with your own reflections of the year. If you've done this before, come kind of on this, both opposite sides, there's candles there to take. Then you can light um, one of the small candles and then you douse it in the water glass and then exit through the center. So again, once the music starts, then you're welcome to come forward and light candles for your stories of the year. From Thomas Moore, the mystery evoked by a story is its heart and value. And our reflections on our stories, as well as the way we tell them, read them, and perform them, should be consonant with their mystery. Stories enchant not by allowing us an escape from the human condition, but by taking us to a place of meeting where our personal lives and all that is beyond them meet. We'll now enter a time of silence.
I'm going to ask Kathy Stanley to come forward and light uh, another candle. We'll light another candle uh, before we close off our time. This candle for peace, for civility amongst the world's peoples, and order throughout the land. We hold all the stories of our lives, many of which are re represented by these candles. We hold these in our hearts. We meditate on the intersection of their respective dramas and narratives and reflect on how together all these stories combine to provide meaning for our lives in 2022. We'll now sing our closing hymn. This one from the hymn book as well, called Every Night and Every Morn, hymn number 17 in our great hymn book. Please stand as you're willing or able. extinguish the chalice. You can stay standing. We'll ask Kathy Stanley to come forward and extinguish our chalice with these words by Robbie Burns. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind, should old acquaintance be forgot and the days of old Lang Syne. For old Lang Syne, my dear, for old Lang Syne, we'll take a cup of kindness yet for days of old Lang Syne. And now we'll sing together, Carry the Flame.